so this is my first show of um, abstract art. I've, uh, in the past, I've done uh, floral work, I've done visionary paintings, uh, some political stuff, and uh, I wanted to branch out into something new. I, um, I've had a really transformative year this year. I uh, quit my job uh, last year and uh, just wanted to really delve into painting uh, and explore new ground. I uh, went traveling for several months. I went to Central America, South America, and that was just a way to kind of pick up some inspiration. And when I came back, I wanted to try something completely new. And of throwing out the the rules that I had in my own head, um, on my old practices, and try something that I hadn't done before. I always kind of looked at abstract art and, and thought, um, you know, a blind chimpanzee could do this. What's the what's the big deal? And, and I thought that when I started to play with these forms, uh, it was actually much harder than I thought. So it took a while to really get into it and to start flowing with it. But once I did, I, I started to really, really enjoy it. And um, having uh, had a lot of fun with it. So these paintings um, were all done outside. I, uh, uh, having uh, you know left the work uh, that I was doing in an office and having been traveling for a while, I, I, I didn't want to be cooped up inside. Even working in a studio was pretty restrictive that way. Um, so I did them all in my backyard. And uh, initially I would do them only on sunny days. Uh, and then I would do them in the rain, and, and what started to happen was I would incorporate the elements into the painting, which was a really fun and amazing experience. So there's some here that were done almost completely in the rain. And what I found was that uh, I started painting with the rain. Um, I would lay down some paint and then watch the effects and, and then do something else with that and it was an interactive process. Uh, so I've called some of them rainfall recordings uh, because it's, it's kind of like how the wind and rain shape the paint, shape the, uh, uh, the forms that you see emerging on the canvas. Um, and I really enjoyed also the um, the, the free flow that I experienced in that process. So normally when I paint, my, my, my paintings are um, have a lot of movement and they're, they're uh, quite expansive and, and have a liberating kind of energy, but the process of, them, of making them themselves is uh, relatively controlled, very precise. And this was one of my um, first experiences with literally throwing paint at the canvas and, and uh, dancing around a canvas and cutting into a canvas and um, incorporating all kinds of materials into it. Um, so it was really branching out and opening up and, and becoming much more creative in ways that um, I hadn't done before. So um, I don't know if I could say something about the specific paintings themselves. This one's called uh, Fire on the Mountain and it's it's got all kinds of materials in it. It has uh, gold leaf, it has um, quinoa seeds, spray paint, uh, pages from books, leaves, um, all kinds of stuff that I wanted to play with, playing with texture. Um, this is a canvas that was donated by the Sunshine Art Center and uh, half the proceeds are being uh, given back to them uh, when it sells. Um, this piece is called uh, Eye Candy, and it's uh, a recycled canvas. I, I can't remember right now what was on it uh, before, but I, this is one of the first canvases that I started to do abstract work with, um, and it actually has several layers of paint on it. Uh, the latest layer was uh, consisted of me just putting paint down on the canvas and I did this one outside and I let the, the rain drip down uh, over the previously uh, laid down shapes. Um, and it just creates this beautiful kind of flowing um, scene. You don't know if it's underground with a root system or underwater, uh, but it's kind of fantastical and, uh, and uh, uh, open-ended, right? It, it, there's a lot left to the viewer's imagination. You can make it whatever you want. At some point I started putting these these kind of droplets, these 
jewel-like shapes, which create this kind of popping out effect that I really like. It's it's uh, it's like soft and subtle and also very crisp at the same time. It creates like a 3D kind of effect. And uh, this is the kind of painting that when it was done, I just I just stared at it for hours. I I'd put it beside my bed at night and I just gaze into it and. Uh, drift off to sleep with it. It's very enjoyable. So this piece is uh, interesting because it, it's uh, it showed me a lot about uh, what people see, how people uh, see things that they want to see, or complete, incomplete pictures. Uh, they project images onto what's kind of an ambiguous situation, right? So a lot of people feel this is like a, a some kind of planetary scene. It looks like some, you know, the moon of Saturn or something like that. And really the way that this painting came about is I, um, I was just laying paint down, laying paint down, layer after layer after layer and seeing what would, what would emerge. And um, part of what that was for me is, is letting go of trying to make any kind of result or any kind of uh, outcome. So I would lay down paint and I'd like what I'd see, but then I'd let that go and I'd, I'd put some more paint down. And what ended up happening was that there was just spontaneously a sort of a, a ring, a, a circle in this one part of the canvas. And I started playing with that and just kind of letting that circle emerge. But there was no intention of making it into some kind of uh, planet or anything like that. Um, I've, I've deliberately not signed any of the canvases because I don't want to define which way is up. I want to let uh, the viewer or the purchaser um, decide that. You know, you could flip this any which way. You could you could flip it diagonally and go into it as much as you want and see whatever you want. And, and I find that's part of the beauty of it is that there's no pre-assigned meaning to it. Uh, in contrast to a lot of my other paintings, where it's 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 much more limited. Uh, there's a, there might be a message there, and there's a powerful message, but it's 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 already there ahead of time, as opposed to something like this, which is is free. Is you can go wherever you want with this. Um, to, to me, it's the that orb is something that could be egg-like, something that could be um, planetary. Um, but but there's so much more available so, uh, in terms of possibilities. There's a lot of texture in it, which I just get lost in as well. It's it's a lot of fun to uh, to gaze into.